guys and welcome back to Let's Play Pokemon Legends Arceus. Now we have awoken to a new mission entitled Disaster Looming. Our only objective right now is to go outside and see what's happening. But we are mysteriously without any background music. So we are probably not going to walk outside and find everything is cupcakes and sunshine. But let us see just what exactly the giant Bakum that we heard last night um, has uh, done. Whoa, Joseph. I try not to talk during the cutscenes like that, but that sky really was kind of a whoa moment. Let's see here. Some sort of dreadful energy seems to be pouring out from the rift in space-time. Now the entire sky has gone red. Red, pink, purple, blue, and a few other colors besides. I've word from the commander. You're to report to his office at once. The way the sky has changed. It is ominous. Very ominous indeed. What's this about, Commander? You did call us here to discuss the quelling of all the nobles, didn't you? That can wait. There is a more pressing concern here that must be addressed. The first strike of that strange lightning, the one that drove Cleaver to frenzy. It struck the night that Joseph fell from the sky, did it not? It only seems natural to think that the two events might be linked in some way. Who or what are you really, Joseph? I don't really know. A Survey Corps member. I don't like how that has a question mark on it. I mean, I don't... I don't really want to say I don't really know, but that is kind of what I would say in this regard. I would simply say that I don't really know why I am here. You know, that is, you know, I know who I am. I know what I am. And I'd be happy to tell you about the world I came from. If I recall correctly, I believe our character is about 15 here. So, you know, he's not a little kid. He's not yet technically an adult, but he's old enough to be able to hold a mature, confident, and steady conversation about you know, I guess for lack of a better word, existentialism. So, you know, I could say that I am from a future. I don't know if it's this world's future, but a future. And go from there. But as far as why I was chosen to come back here, I do not know that. And so I feel like I don't really know is the best answer. Indeed. You came from the rift, as did the lightning. You're connected to these frenzies, are you not? Well, again, I don't know. Did you think to gain our trust by quelling the frenzies you yourself brought about? And having gained our trust, what then? What is it you're really after here? Uh, at the moment, I'm here to quell your paranoia. Because at this point, I feel like it is just paranoia. Hold on, Commander. There's nothing to suggest Joseph has wronged us. Exactly. And besides... Oh no, I'm sorry, this is Adamant. <laughs> exactly. And besides, do you really think he's got the sort of fearsome power it'd take to make all this happen? Let me ask you in turn. Can you prove beyond a doubt that he is free from guilt? This person, this stranger, appeared out of a rift in space-time. Who here can guarantee he is who he says? Who here can guarantee he is to be trusted? But that's... No one can do that. You're asking us to prove a negative. How is anyone supposed to prove the absence of all doubt? 
come on, let's be reasonable. What is Joseph supposed to do then? He will be given the chance to investigate this latest disaster. But not as a member of the Galaxy team. He remains a suspect unless he can clear his name. There are those in our village who cannot trust a stranger like you who fell from the sky. Yes, namely, you. Other people don't seem to have much of a problem with me. No offense, Commander. And so I must ask you to leave. You are no longer welcome in the Galaxy Team. Consider yourself banished from this village until you can explain why these calamities keep befalling our good people. No, until you've restored our world to its rightful state and proven your innocence beyond doubt. Is that clear, Silene? Yes, sir. How can you act so heartless? Don't you believe in Joseph? Do not attempt to intervene on his behalf. I will do what I must as the commander of the Galaxy Expedition Team. But I have not forgotten your deeds, nor the unusual skill you have displayed. That is why I have chosen to let you walk out of here free rather than clap you, clap you in chains. And we're seeing here some of the mentality that drove the Galaxy Expedition team to become Team Galactic, I'm guessing. You are to be expelled from the village? What? Why? Orders are orders. Well, to answer your question, Akari, the what and why is the sky and rampant paranoia and fear. Fear is a powerful, powerful thing. Let's go. Oh, but I didn't get to complete the beautifully thing. This way. Oh. Oh, I'm in control here. Whoops, when she said this way, I, th I thought we were still in a cutscene. So... I mean, I could understand how the game could continue with me going and not being a part of the Galaxy Expedition team, or at least not being allowed back in the village. Um, sorry to undermine the drama of this whole situation with my thing. How could anyone do such a thing? I guess we should have expected this from a stranger from the... Oh, so they actually do doubt me. So if I walk over towards these guys... This way, they don't say anything. So I guess maybe they do trust me. Okay, I don't know. But anyway, I could see how the game could continue on without me being allowed back in the village. But, um... I wouldn't have access to my pastures, I wouldn't have access to my stuff, so I'm not sure why they're doing it like this, except I can only assume something is about to intervene in this course of events. Here's Rest, though. We hardly ever hear from Rest, except when we're exiting the village. We can take it from here, ma'am. Understood. Surprised they didn't ask me to turn my uniform back in. However, the decision was mine to accept this stranger as a member of the Survey Corps. It is only right that I should personally escort him from the village and to the Fieldlands camp. I'll also see him off. As will I, naturally. I'll allow it. Then I'll mark you all down as bound for the Fieldlands camp. Safe travels. What's going on here, Silene? Well, I guess Silene might be out here because they need a, a quote unquote, a door to prevent me from going back into the village, or me to have some way to unlock said quote unquote door. So Silene might be that, um, she may just be the barricade that prevents me from going back in the village and. Bleh, excuse me, village, until I complete this latest task. I can't believe the boss would do this. You were acting on his own orders when you quelled the frenzied nobles. Quite right. Moreover, even if you did happen to fall from the sky, that hardly gives you the power to turn it red. Well, I guess it is mostly red, isn't it? Or at least those, uh, tile scale looking things are. This is utterly intolerable, and I might add, absurdly unscientific. As a man of science, I must fight such illogical thinking tooth and nail. You must not. You will only cause Joseph more pain if you are driven out as well for defending him. This is true. This is true. However, there are others who might offer help. 
You've been an aide to both the Diamond Clan and the Pearl Clan. Of course! Perhaps Adamant or Rita might take you in. Though I'm afraid they've both already returned to their respective settlements. Perhaps you could try to f go find Leon first. He's likely to be at Grand Tree Arena. Don't die out there... Er, excuse me. Don't die out... If I could get this right. Don't die alone out there. That's an order. I will ensure you have all you need to complete the survey the commander has tasked you with. If I might offer my advice, in this life, you will meet with both admiration and abuse from others. How others choose to view you is a choice only they can make. You cannot make it for them. All that truly matters is that you hold firm to your own values. What a dream I first shared with you on Prelude Beach, to complete the Pokedex. That dream simply won't come true without you. Seek out Leon. All right. Ah, oh, yes, and here is... And, okay, now just just because we, we want to be curious, what happens if I talk to Akari, Akari? Perhaps you should try to go find Leon first. He's not to be reentry reading. Okay, so she just uh, redirects us to the main mission. And what does Silene say? Is my offer my advice? Okay, and then she repeats all of this, which is very good advice. Um, the way I usually like to think about that is I cannot control others' choices. I am not responsible for others' choices. <laughs> I can only control what I do in this world. And so that is the best way to go about life. Doing the best that you can with that part of the world that you can directly affect. And making, you know, no matter how small that part of the world may be that you can directly affect, you know, you want to do your best to make it a better place. And in that way, you can hope that other people will also make the world a better place in whatever small way they can. And if we all do that together, we can make the world, or we can improve the world little by little. I need one of these. Thank you. Also need to gain a little more altitude in the hopes that we can take off from the top of the... Oh good, I didn't get hurt. Take off from the very t tip top of the, um, the peak right there. So let's see if I can get over here. I don't really need all this altitude, to be honest, but I'd like to have it. But yes, I was wondering if something like this wasn't going to happen. If there was going to be something that finally pushed Commander Commodo to very directly come out with it and say that he just doesn't trust us at all. But let's go find Liam. See, and this is the interesting thing, too, here. As far as I am aware, based on all of our previous gameplay, we are basically locked in the Obsidian Fieldlands right now, because the only way we can get to another part of the game is by returning to the village and again leaving back out. But I will be honest, I'm actually very glad that they are bringing Liam back into this. Simply because I'm hoping that by going and talking to him, he may mention what I need to do to evolve a Scyther, or a Scissor for that matter, into a Cleaver. Because so far all I know is I need some kind of special rock. You! What in the world did you do? Look at the size of that rift! If lightning starts pouring from it, all the Pokémon in Hisui could be thrown into a frenzy. The entire clan is in a panic now. I should have known that the only thing that could come from that rift was disaster. I don't like either of these options. I would try to apologize and explain that I had nothing to do with the rift, but that I want to help him, not just come up here and say, I need help. Um, and then never mind then, is just... That's just me basically giving up without even trying. Uh, uh, I guess pessimistic choice, optimistic choice. I'll go with the optimistic, optimistic choice. But my real answer would be, I need help and I want to help you at the same time. That would be what I would say here. But yeah, I kind of expected, you know, this from Leon. Help? Uh, well, it's not exactly something I can do. It's not that I wouldn't like to help you, but it would put Arita in a difficult position. I truly do wish that I could repay you for quelling Cleaver's frenzy as you did. You must know that. 
but there's nothing I alone can do for you. Warden Mai might be able to help you, though. She's a caring woman, after all. You'll most likely find Mai at the Warren Bridge. I believe it's a very significant place for her. I am certain that somewhere in the vastness of Isui, there is a place for you as well. Thank you, Leon. So... Is this just more or less going to be a... Seek out all the old wardens type mission? Well, I'm glad they gave us Braviary before doing this. Um, the Warren Bridge... Oh, right, 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 the Warren Bridge. That is way over here. Um, so let's dash. Oh, actually, as we're dashing... We can actually go over here and uh, take a quick look at the Star Raptor that's flying around up here. Hi, Star Raptor. I would stop and try to do a little more with you, but um, apparently the universe is about to end, so I've got to go ahead and take care of this. And I don't feel too uh, overly dramatic in saying that the whole universe is going to end, because we're dealing with the creators of space and time and all that. Okay, so here is the Warren Bridge. Let me land up here. Alright, guys. And as I go across the bridge, I'm going to put in a quick cut just to make sure the recording stays safe. Oh yeah, Munchlax. I forgot my head, Munchlax. My, my. What a frightful sky. Such a disturbing sight would be enough to put anyone ill at ease. You don't know what brought this about, do you? I don't know. I'm trying to find it. Possibly the quelling of the lords. Possibly the quelling of the lords, and I'm trying to find out and set things right. I suppose it was too much to expect that you could already that you could already have an answer to all this. I heard from our leader what happened. You can't return to that village of yours, can you? But I'm afraid the Diamond Clan cannot be the ones to save you. The Diamond Clan could end up at war with the Galaxy team if things went badly. I think you would regret that as much as anyone. Yes, very much. The main thing I regret right now is not being able to go directly up to Spear Pillar. But of course the only reason I'm trying to get to Spear Pillar myself is because I have fourth wall breaking knowledge of how this uh, universe works. <laughs> the Great Weird Ear took a liking to you. I want to offer you my support, but... Forgive me, I cannot help you in this. Uh, alas, politics. Do not abandon hope. Time solves all things. And besides, you seem to have a talent for making your own way into the world. I have no doubt you'll continue to find a path to walk. Okay. Looks like the game's going to do something for us. Oh, okay. Cutscene. I'm rather glad, to be honest, that um, I did change out of our snow gear, though. Seeing as I don't seem to... I, I wouldn't want to be walking around doing all this with my snow gear. I like the fact that I'm in my uh, current uniform. But here we have what I think is a Shinx going cur at us. Yeah, Shinx! Oh, and Luxio. Aha, and Q Volo. Strange events seem to follow you wherever you go, don't they? Found you at last, Joseph. I've been looking all over for you, you know. What would I do if I were to lose one of my favorite customers? You know, ironically, I haven't really bought anything from Volo and barely anything from the Ginkgo Guild. Hmm. Don't worry, I've already heard what happened. A good merchant knows well the importance of staying abreast of all the latest news. I mean, like the sky turning doom? It seems you're in quite the pinch. No place for you among the Diamond Clan or the Pearl Clan, to say nothing of how poorly the Galaxy Team has treated you. But not to worry. There are still corners of Isui re 
There are still corners of the Hasui region where we can stash you away in secret. I know a spot that will be the perfect hideaway. Leave it all up to me. Is this like the world's, or the Pokemon world's first secret base? <laughs> or is he going to take us to like the Ginkgo Guild settlement? Ooh, the loading icon. I'm really enjoying this. Oh, where are we here? I guess we'll have to see. Here we are! I know, I know, it's no palace. But you know the saying about beggars and choosers. I think it looks wonderful, Volo. Thank you very much. I greatly appreciate the hospitality. Speak to the person who dwells here at the retreat. First! <gasps> oh! Oh, and I... Oh, yeah, I can zoom out. Okay, so this is its own little minor sub-map. Where am I? Oh, neat! There is a little secret hidden area in the map. Oh. I was hoping they'd do something like this. And not only that, but this makes me hopeful that, like, this could be an area. And this could be an area. <laughs> I was hoping we could zoom out and zoom back in and see what's going on here. Uh, actually, there's some icons. What's this? Um... Workbench. Okay, I got workbench. And Kogitas. Kogita. Kogita? Kogita. Hmm. Oh, let's, let's try to walk. This doesn't seem like a running situation. Oh my! Well, 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 she certainly does not look like someone who is native to Hisui. Based on the architecture from the village and the, the steam pipe works coming out and the Galarian wheezing and all that, I I would almost guess that she might be um, from Galar or Unova or, or I mean, see, because I, I don't know what state the other regions are in in this timeline. Sinnoh, even back in Generation 4 of the Pokemon games, while it was a incorporated and developed region with you know cities and industries and all that stuff, it was always one of the more wild areas. It was like it was one of the last places on um, the Pokemon planet that got settled. And so, I don't know. She she looks like she may be from some more um, advanced culture or civilization. Um, s still still from this same time frame, uh, you understand, but. Um, Maybe from Galar or Kanto or, or some other region that is um, a little more, or that's a little less wild. But let's see here. Shirking your work to come pester me again? Even beneath a bleeding sky, you never change. Always a pleasure, Mistress Gogeta. But I'm afraid I'm not here today to learn more of Hisui's myths and legends. Oh. Oh, wow, I love her design. No, mistress, thank you. Just Kogita. And this is? Why, Joseph is the man of the hour! He's the one who quelled the frenzy of all the Pokémon nobles, believe it or not. Ah, uh, the poor wretch you spoke of. Lost in time and space. Dear me, lost one. It seems I'll be able to fulfill my duty at long last, thanks to you. Lost one. No, I'd be more curious on duty. Indeed. I am to guide you, Lost One, for the task of preventing great disaster falls to you. The rift in space-time must be mended, lest time and space themselves be thrown out of balance. There's a part of me that wants to say again there, because this seems to happen so many times. But come, you may enter my dear hideaway. There's much to be told. Oh, I am loving this. This is great. Oh, look at the inside of her house. Oh, that green. It's beautiful. The space-time rift is said to be a portal to innumerable other dimensions. In one such realm, far and farther still from ours, dwells almighty Sinnoh. The Diamond Clans? The Pearl Clans? Neither. I'll go with the first choice there. They're both the same, really. The expanse from antiquity to eternity, and the expanse to all sides above and below. 
Time traces the path we tread from the here and now into the future, while space yawns all-encompassingly, surrounding us in every direction. You see, don't you? The two together, time and space, comprise all creation, the universe. How can one claim that either is greater than the other, as those two clans do? They're inseparable. Perhaps the truth is clearer to a wanderer such as you, one who has known other ages. Now listen, lost one. Here is what you must do. Hisui holds three lakes of great importance, Lake Verity, Lake Valor, and Lake Acuity. At each dwells a Pokémon said to embody one aspect of the mind. Complete the trials each will set you, and bear their gifts to the shrouded ruins. There you may receive the red chain. With it, perhaps you can bind the world together. Bind the world, you say? You mean it won't close the rift? Kindly spare me your doubts, young man. I know the old words and what they bid us do. How true they are isn't mine to know. And regardless of their truth, I am bound to pass them on. How callous of my ancestors to leave their legends to their children without a thought for the hardship it would cause them. But here we are. You know your duty, and you'll do it, won't you? Of course. There is nobility in knowing what must be done and seeing to it. Your arc phone is beeping! You can see the locations of three lakes marked on your arc phone. Mistress Gogeta's got a lovely workbench here, and if you need materials, I'll be glad to help. I'm always happy to do business with you. What about the pastures? I'll need to rest too. Well, we'll just go with the first question because it's going to answer all of them. Ah, that is a problem, isn't it? What shall we do about that indeed? Silene. What was that cry? Er, sorry, this is Kogata. What was that cry? Have we now a lost Pokemon as well as a lost child? Do see to it, please. How could I, refu how could I refuse you, ma'am? Off we go, Joseph. Yeah, that was Abra. So I'm guessing Abra will be here to teleport our Pokemon to us. Hello, hello, it's an Abra! Where did you teleport in from, little fellow? And it's got a letter. A letter addressed to you, Joseph. You take a closer look at the letter. To Joseph. You may use my Pokémon as a go-between to access the pastures in Jubilife Village. I've also ensured that you'll be able to utilize our base camps without issue. I have every confidence in your ability as an adept Survey Corps member to bring this bizarre situation under control promptly. Sincerely, Silene, Survey Corps Captain, Galaxy Expedition Team. <laughs> Good tidings from the letter, then. That's right, it's a secret. No, that's right. Now then, so we're to visit three lakes. Doesn't sound like an easy task, that's for sure. It sure would be wonderful to have a kind soul who might help us out. Quite the opportunist, aren't you, Volo? Such a consummate guild merchant. I've managed to reassure my people for now. The Wardens are keeping a close eye on their nobles, too. Seems all's quiet for the moment. And so, here we are. But still, we'll never get away with openly aiding you. If we were to undermine the Commander's direct orders, relations would grow... strained. Long story short, we want to help, but without drawing attention, so it'll be just one of us. Me or her. It's up to you, though the answer should be obvious. Choose whose help you want on the path ahead, Adamant of the Diamond Clan or Irida of the Pearl Clan. Oh, don't make me choose something like this. Oh, alright, alright. I couldn't possibly choose either one of them based on, like, a personality type thing. I, I think they're both excellent characters. Um, let me think here. Irida has Glaceon and Eevee. Uh, Adamant has Leafeon and Eevee. 
Um, at least that's all I've ever seen them use. Um, now to be honest, I'm not really sure which of those... Yeah, I mean, Leafeon or Glaceon. I, if, if we're going to have to battle the Lake Guardians, which I can't even remember off the top of my head what they are other than Psychic, I, they actually, all three of them may just be pure Psychic types, so Leafeon, Glaceon would be kind of a six one way, half dozen the other type choice, but... Oh... You know what? I'll make the decision based on the fact that we're going to be traveling all around Hisui, which is a great distance, and I guess I'll choose Arida. Um, I really don't like that it's making me choose this. I'm sure it's it's just flavor change, you know? It's just going to change who is... Actually, that's a good point. It's going to change the text that we probably get at each location. And to be fair, I'm actually a bit a bit more of a fan of how Adamin um, talks, just sort of the, the, the zeal and flair that he sort of puts on his um, his text and whatnot. Plus, it would be nice, I'm not going to lie, if, if this is if this storyline is going where I think it's going, to a reconciliation between the Pearl Clan and the Diamond Clan, um, and sort of the whole like understanding of who and what Almighty Sinnoh is, I think it'd be more fun to see Adamin kind of get his ego brought down and deflated just a tad. So we're going to go with Adamin. Yeah, let's go ahead and go with Adamin, yeah. Obviously you'll choose me, right? Who gave you that Celestic Flute in the first place? That's right, this strapping young man. <laughs> yeah, I choose you, Adamin. Thought so, you can count on me. Now please, I just hope Irida isn't upset. So then, the leftover leader will... Leftover? I'm not someone scraps. I will keep watch on the commander. I imagine I'll hear something useful from him. Oh, I like the fact that I chose Adamin then with the, this prog this progression. I feel like Arida would be much better at maintaining a, a nice, calm, demure, um, clandestine presence around the commander than Adamin would. I, I, I like this better now. I think this works better with the storyline. Of course, of course. And the lucky chosen one comes with us to the wake. Er, sorry. And the lucky chosen one comes with us to the lakes. We can fill you in on the details as we go. Well, the first task will be decided which... Uh, the... well... Uh, sorry. Well, the first task will be to decide which of the Hisui region's three great lakes to visit first. Right. And we better get a move on. No time to waste. I'll meet you wherever we decide to go. We'd be in hot water if we were seen traveling together. Yeah, the other... Yeah, yeah, that's an excellent way of the game, basically covering up the fact that we never actually walk anywhere with anyone. I'm counting on you to handle this, Adamin. Don't cause Joseph more trouble. The Trial of Lake Verity. I guess I don't really get a choice. Not that I expected to. Oh, really? Oh, no, no, we do get a choice. The Trial of Lake Valor, and of course the Trial of Lake Acuity. Alright, so we're off to see Mesprit, Azelf, and Uxie. Um, no, 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 I don't want the... I don't want the Crimson Mireland. Uh, we may as well do this in order. Yeah, what? Well, why is the Valor showing? Obsidian Fieldlands. Yeah. Okay, I guess I guess it just had to take a second to reset. And now, heading out is going to be Adamin. So, where are you headed? We are headed... Oh yeah, and I guess we can go anywhere we want, too. But, uh, no, let's, let's completely focus on storyline for now. So, let's go ahead and go over to... Uh, the Heights Camp? Well, with Braviary, either one is closest. Um... No, but the Heights Camp will give us a better um, launching point for Braviary. But yeah, the game has dropped us right into the middle of Storyland, and so we are going to be focusing on Story for the next good while. Look at that sky. It's actually rather beautiful. 
Oh, I see. And so now, now we're going to get to go over to the actual middle of the islands. Oh, and they were even... Well, I was about to say they were even um, smart enough to put, like, things you could grab on top of the mountains. But I suppose with Sneasler as a party member, or a, um, a Pokemon we can use, it, you know, we can get up there even without Braviary. Alright, so let's head down. Try to not have Braviary crash into the ground. Now, I know how I got over here. How on earth did you guys get over here? They say this lake actually used to be a volcano. Oh, it's a caldera. Neat. Then it erupted, leaving a huge crater that filled with water. And so Lake Verity was born. It is protected by a Pokemon called Mesprit. It was when Mesprit took flight that people first learned the joys and sorrows of living. Or that's how the old tales go, anyway. Your arc phone is beeping. You gotta love the Insta-Cave app. Great app to have. Anytime you need a cave, just poof, there it is. Th th that cave, it, it just appeared from nowhere. Is that the arc phone the professor was going on about? Let's do this, Joseph. Mistress... Oh, this is Volo talking. Mistress Cogata seemed quite intent that you would have to prove yourself to all three of the Pokémon that guard these lakes. This challenge was never for the faint of heart. Uh, da, 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 da. I should have thought about this ahead of time, but I've got Umbreon as a dark type, and I don't really want a whole bunch of super effective... I ass I'm, I'm jumping to the conclusion here that we'll be able to catch the late guardians in this game. I'm certainly going to do everything in my power to do it. There's something about this place I can't quite put into words. <gasps> Ooh. Hello, Gudra. A menacing Pokemon stands before you. Trounce that thing, Joseph. Prove to the Pokémon of the lake how strong you are. I'm wishing I had spent more time level level grinding my Pokémon up to all all of them up to level 50, so I'd have a wider range of types. Battle the Pokémon lurking within Verity Cavern. Uh, a Dragon type, a Dragon type. Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna have much luck here. Um, whoops. It's not letting me focus in on it. I wanted to see what level it was. Yes, hello, Gudra. Okay, Typhlosion, let's give this our best shot. You're at a bit of a disadvantage here, I believe, based on type. Speaking of which, are Gudra in Hisui... All the Pokémon's stats are boosted. The Pokémon also takes reduced damage from status conditions and move, and move effects such as poisoning and splinters. A Dragon and Steel type. You know, I cannot remember off the top of my head if Gudra was always a Dragon and Steel type or not. But, I guess... Typhlosion isn't at such a disadvantage... Well, no, because it's Dragon, so the Dragon protects the Steel type from being super effective, but... Let's start off with a sh strong style flamethrower and go from there. I do kind of wish I had, um, like a bite evolved into a, or, yeah, like a bite evolved into a Garchomp. Oh, and it, okay. Oh, it's got a status condition. Oh, darn. It's got that burn status condition, which means Infernal Parade will be even more powerful. So, for the time being, Weasel. Let's send you out, since it's using water-type moves. hate to do this to him, but I'm really only using Weasel so that I can get Typhlosion healed back up. I could definitely have made things easier on myself by having um, 
full revives and not just regular ones, but I don't really want to, um, what's the word? I, I don't want to just like take all the challenge out of this. I'm actually kind of enjoying the fact that I'm having to battle this more strategically and not just brute force my way through it. Okay, so even with the added power of the burn condition, Infernal Parade still didn't do quite as much damage as I was hoping. Alright. Good to know, though. Good to know, though. Alright. Oh, there we go. Star Raptor. Let's see how that close combat does. So with advanced knowledge of this, one of the best things you could do is make sure that all of your Pokémon are um, getting as stat boosted as they could be from um, the uh, the grit stuff, the grit dust and grit rocks and all that. Anyway, that's the way, Joseph. I can tell by watching that you and the Pokémon you've caught in those little balls truly understand one another. Now let's see about the Pokémon of the lake. You feel a mysterious presence. <laughs> Mesprit. It's so cute. Complete Mesprit's trial in Verity Cavern. Um, well, since this is a Pokemon game, more than likely... Uh, I don't have any citrus berries with which to craft... Actually, it's revives in king leaves. I don't have any king leaves. Mm. Oh well. I'm gonna make five more of these just because I can. Let's go ahead and get everybody revived first and then healed up. Because since this is a Pokemon game, more than likely, it's gonna be a battle. I love this music kind of wind chime effects. Just in case. No, let's just do 10. And then do another 10. Oh, come on. There we go. Oop. Come on, come on, come on. Yeah, there we go. I think that's good. Alright. Uh, no, we, we shouldn't need to worry about power points. Your emotions. Share them with me. Oh, neat. The Pokemon are talking. Certainly. So it speaks from its mind straight to yours? It makes sense for Pokemon that embodies an aspect of the mind, I guess. When you fell to this land, what stirred in your heart? Surprise, panic, bewilderment. Surprise. How did it feel to bond with Pokemon and work together? Exciting, bizarre, heartening. Heartening. I don't I don't know if these different um, answers actually do anything here. I'm just trying to answer as honestly as I can. What did you feel when you mingled with Hisui's clans? We're also different. It's a wide world. I don't know. Well, I want to say we're also different, but I mean that in a good way. Variety is the spice of life, and different people coming together with all their different perspectives and ideas and ways of seeing things are what open up new possibilities. Um, I'm not saying this one. It's a wide world. We're also different. I mean this in a good way. I, I hope that this doesn't, you know, cause any problems. What did you feel when cast out of the Galaxy Team? I felt bitter. Life is complicated. I accepted it. Honestly, I accepted it. I, 
I'm ready to go over to Spear Pillar and fix the world. You know, I mean, it just... You gotta do what you gotta do. Take this piece of the spirit to bind the world once more. Obtained Mesprit's plume. Proof that you have completed the trial set by Mesprit, the being of emotion that lives in Lake Verity. This item is needed to forge the red chain. Looks almost like an envelope. <laughs> I like its cry. Oh, we don't get to catch it. I mean, you catch them in Diamond and Pearl, so I guess that kind of makes sense, but still. I can't even imagine what you must feel like, having a Pokémon talk to you without words. I liked it. Well, the world's full of mysteries, I guess. I can hardly even be surprised at things like these after seeing the sky itself so warped. Now, we've two lakes left to visit. Um, okay, so I guess now I'm back in charge. Uh, I doubt they would put anything to collect in here. But I may as well run around and just explore and see. Anything unique in here? Or... Oh, it's, it's even got the little symbol thing. The, the way the water is laid out. Nice. Hmm. You have to wonder, though, were these columns built by Pokemon or were these columns built by people? Well, let's head back out. I will pop over to the um, secret area. Or I guess I shouldn't call it a secret area, but wherever Kogita's place is, and um, refresh myself. Looks like that worked out well, Joseph. Gotta admit, you sure know plenty about Hisui, Volo. That's right! You could say it's because I'm a merchant, but mostly I'm just naturally filled with curiosity. I want to know exactly what happened in the past that led us to this particular present. Or more accurately, I suppose, I want to know where I came from and where I'm headed. I want to know my path, so to speak. I think we'd all like some answers on that. I don't properly know how we came to worship Almighty Sinnoh in the first place. I've even got some questions about its true nature. Eighty matters to ponder for sure, but we have an important task before us. Do you want to return to Mistress Kogita's home? Let's go back, please. Perfect. I'd like to see what she thinks of our progress. <laughs>